Chavra, good morning. It's uh, a bright Monday morning here. Chav Vav Shvat. The Hayoyim Yoyim is all about Ava, love. Loving another Yid. So it's appropriate that we're learning Tanya in uh, the chapters that deal with Ava Hashem and overall the concept of the Jewish perspective on love. And here we begin chapter Mem Zayin. And in this chapter, the Alter Rebbe still continues to explain something that continues from chapter 46. In chapter 46, he spoke about what's known as the Ava Kamayim Lepmayim, the reflection of, the, of, of, of a person's face on water reflects his face, it mirrors his face, so too every Yid has a deep within himself a natural love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and the and the Alter Rebbe used the, the thought that triggers, okay, the thought that triggers this Ava Kemayim Lemayim Keponim Keponim that Hashem, who's a Rav, God, Melech, Melech God, a Rav, a great and mighty king, he goes himself and he lowers to the to the, to, to the lowest person, the person who's in filth and, and and spiritually messed up and everything else, and he schleps him out from there, and he gives a lot, a lot of details, which we discussed at length in our last shiurim on chapter forty-six. And just for an aside, by the way, this chapter forty-six, I heard from. You know, mashpiim and people who were, you know, who are of the Hashem, that they to use this uh, kind of as a meditation, a reflection. If you're looking for kind of a a, a beautiful meditation to really uh, memorize, even you know, orally the the mush, mushel, and not just the mushel. There was a king, and a king picked someone up from the garbage. But the details in the mushel, which are numerous, like there's four or five details within the mushel. Then to reflect back what that means in the nimshul, uh, in the moral, and and that that's a very powerful meditation for being thankful to Hashem and being connected and and keeping on growing. So in line with that, in chapter forty-seven, the Alter Rebbe now says, "So you're telling me this is what Alter Rebbe said. You're telling me that we Jews were taken out of Egypt. Egypt is the filth of the land, the dirt, you know, the spiritual the, um, corruption and everything else. Thank you very much." Thank you very much. That happened thousands of years ago. What, has, what does that have to do with us today? In Bet Shemesh, in Borough Park, what does that have to do with us? Yeah, so Pesach night, we'll reflect, and we'll have the four cups of wine and the matzahs, and very nice. So here the Alter Rebbe says that it's relevant to us today. And the Alter Rebbe here um, quotes a chazal, but he inserts two words uh, that is not, a few words which aren't in the Chazal, although there's a source for it elsewhere. Let's look inside. Vehine Pedek Mizayin, chapter forty-seven, page one thirty-two. Vehine Bechol Doyin Vadoyin in every generation, and the Alter Rebbe now adds the words Uvechol Yoyin Vayoyin. Right? Really, it's the the, the Chazal is Vechol Doyin Vadoyin Chayav Adam Liris Atzmek Yihulu Yotz Ayoyim Mitzrayim. That's what we say on Pesach night. But the Alter Rebbe inserts the words of Chol Yom V'Yom. So the Rebbe and, uh, and, and others have already found sources that there is a Medrash and there's an opinion. And, but, but the way the Alter Rebbe expresses it, it here is, is unique. And what's the reason why he adds not only in each generation but every single day one is obligated to see himself. Liris Atzma Ki'ilu as though Hu Yotza Hayom he leaves today, Mimitzrayim. Why, Moshe? Because if it was something, Bechol Dervador, every generation, what does that have to do with me today? And the Atanya is relevant today. Today. And today doesn't mean only today. Today means tomorrow. And today means when Mashiach will come. And today means for eternity. What's the Vart? What's the Chiddush? That the Hashem taking us out of Egypt didn't happen one time historically. And, and, and which we celebrate Pesach night, right? It happens daily. And since it happens, Chaim Zev, daily, we, it can, therefore the love of, of the reflection of the face on the water, the, the love to Hashem is a daily thing. Imagine, imagine we are right now in a jail. We are right now in an Egypt. And some, Hashem comes, someone comes and opens the door and says, out you go. And in our case, in Eretz Yisrael, you know, the hostages, may Hashem help them. They're mamish in that case. And when the door is opened for, for 
I'm not going into the reasons now that yeah, it's a good deal, it's not a good deal. I'm not just saying when the poil they come out, it's it's yes, it's trying it keep shooting. And maybe and 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 possibly even greater than you'd see us with Sahim living with these barbaric animals and all that. So Dr. Rebbe says that a yid has to realize, and he's gonna tell us now how, that every day we can we can we go out and we can go out of Mitzrayim, therefore it's relevant to us today. That's the Nakuda, that's the message of chapter 47 of Tanya, which is rather a, a short chapter. Let's let's read inside. He, how do you go out? It's see us now for sure the key is it's the exiting of the godly soul in my Saraguf from the bondage of the body, Mishcha de Chivye, as he mentioned several times, the quote from Zayar, it's the skin of the serpent, of the snake, which means it's negative, it's it's clipum, and it leaves this this domain and this atmosphere and this environment, Likolil, to incorporate itself, the unity of the infinite God, through the study of Torah Mitzvah, generally speaking, more specifically, by accepting upon yourself the yoke of God, when we say the Shema, Shabo Mekabil Umamshik Olov, it's in Shema when you accept and you draw upon yourself Yehudi is born of God's unity, be paid be firush, but omre explicitly when you say Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echod. God is our God's God is our one. Whose God is it? God is our God. Is it whose God? My God. Hashem Echod. One me. Me and everyone else, and not me and the ego, but Hashem is, is I, I, the unity of Hashem, that Hashem exists in my life and every detail of my life. Hence, he's taking me out of Egypt. He's giving me a chance. He's giving me the key to unlock the, the, the bondage and the slavery. As we explained earlier, Kielokeinu who Kamoi Elokei Avram. Elokeinu, our God, is similar to what we say, the God of Abraham, of Avram. Now the question is, what's the similarity between our God, Hashem being our God, and the God of Abraham, which we say in the Shemun Esri? Avram was nullified, completely subservient to Hashem and incorporated in the infinity of God. There's a difference. And listen to this, this is brilliant. Shavram Bekoidish. How did Avram merit to having this union with God through his actions and through his behavior as he continued in holiness? from level to level. Avram, Avram traveled, the implication being, he walked, he continued, and he and he traveled. He went higher and higher. Yoini, right? Lord, make me high, make me high, make me high, higher and higher. Avram, <laughs> Isser, don't get, don't get, don't get, you gotta, you gotta be a little humorous, Isser. Anyway, <laughs> so. I don't think that's what he meant. Okay, let, I said, don't, let, let's leave it, okay? Let's go on. So, higher and higher, Avram is holach v'neseya. Avram is traveling. Where is he traveling? He's traveling and elevating himself. What he did to Shabbos, Moshe is not enough. Shabbos was Gvaldik. Shabbos was said Lechayim. Shabbos was Divri Teir. Shabbos we were family. It's now Monday. It's a new day. Holach v'nesaya, Avram. Avram says, yes, I got to keep on going. Now don't look back. I got to keep on going in holiness. So Avram earned his union and connection with Hashem through his Aveda, through his service of God. Avol anachnu, conversely, we, Yerusha umatana. Look, he uses two words. It's an inheritance and it's a gift. And there's a difference between an inheritance and a gift, but both mean you didn't earn it. You, when you're a nice boy, sometimes you get a gift. Okay. But you don't create it. You don't create it. An inheritance, you don't create. You can be the, you know, your, your parents, uh, your parents all their life didn't agree. You guys didn't get along. And all of a sudden they pass away. You open up the will. He leaves a half a million dollars for you. Oh, wow. 
That's what your father decided. That's what your mother decided, even though you were arguing cats and dogs all your life. You know? It's a Yerusha. A Yerusha is not up to us, the Yorish, the inheritor. It's up to the one giving the inheritance. And same is true for Matana. So in other words, we being part of the Jewish people, the children of the patriarchs and the matriarchs, we merit something that we didn't earn. Jump up and down from today to tomorrow with the famous anecdote, the, you're a chicken and you're not a cat. Sprinkle me once, sprinkle me twice and say, Holy Father and all that shtusim, you're still a Jew. You, you, need, you need a rabbinic conversion for if, you know, if you went and, and, and worshipped idolatry and, and, and things like that, etc. True. But a yid's a yid. And we've seen this over and over and the stories keep on pouring out of how this priest reveals I, I came, my mother told me she was a survivor and she came from Jews and on and on. A Jew is a Jew. Yerusha, it's a Yerusha. So Avram, Avram earns his, his, his relationship with God because he's constantly nosoya. He's traveling, he's moving, he's working. We, on the other hand, just get it kind of automatically. So let's look down to the it says, Avanachnu us. Yerusha matoni hilonu. She nosan, now on top of page Samach Zayin. Nosan lonu es teirase, God gave us his teira, v'hilbush boret zayin, v'chumasi boret, and he invested his will and his wisdom in Torah, ha-miyuchodim, b'muhusi v'atzmus, his boret, that are united with God Almighty, b'tachlas ha-yichud, with the ultimate and absolute union. V'harezek, ilo nosan lonu, s'atz v'kav v'yochum. This is anthropomorphically speaking, as though God gave himself to us. So we Jews, have God. We have God. So why does Dalton ever make this difference here? Because he, he, it's important to point out that Avram had to earn it. But once he earned it, he inherited it to us automatically. So the, the point being, as far as the, the continuation over here in Tanya, that every Yid must know that he has this Ava, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, deep within himself, every Jew. It can be asleep, it can be latent, but it's there. And, and therefore, when you think about what God did for you, Kemayim upon him, upon him, you'll wake up from your slumber and you'll say, wow, I owe, I owe you God my life. And the, and the love will come out from within very deep. Now he brings the Zayar, actually, in the, not this Pasha, next Pasha, V'yikuli Truma. Hashem says, take to me a Truma. Deli. What, what do you mean, take to me? V'yikhu Truma. Bring an, an offering, make a donation. It doesn't say, it says, bring the donation to me. It says the Altar Ebna Brak is Deli, Klema, Deli, the words Li implies I see. Guess what? Now, the the the, the is saying, when you give a donation to the Mishkan, you have me. Your donation assures you that you have God. So if so, it should have said, "V'yikhuli, take God." Vitruma and give a donation. Why does it say, according to the Zayar, in other words, the question is, Hevra, why does it say, Vayikhuli Truma without a Vav, Vitruma? The simple meaning is, give a donation. But according to this question, this diuk that the Alter Rebbe says, what's this language that the Zayar says? Actually, it's the Zayar's question. What's the language Li? Take to me, duh, of course. If God says, give a donation, who's it going to God? You don't have to say Lee. So the Zayar Hillel is saying, the Zayar is teaching us that when you give the donation, there's something additional happening, or seemingly, and that is you're taking God. Not only are you taking the don donation. So therefore, this, the question is, if that's the case, it should say, Ve Truma, with a vav. Take God and, or through, the donation. 
So the Alter Rebbe says, Elam Mishum the Kulechad Ayishom Hetiv. He says, if you look very well into the Zayar, he doesn't tell us how, you will understand that that's what the Zayar is saying. By take, giving the donation, you have God. So if it would say Vit with a Vav, it would imply two separate things. There is the donation, and there is God, and the two separate things. And the Chiddush of the Zohar is that it's one thing. By the way, what is the word uh, Truma? Right? Torah Mem. Right? Torah was given 40 days. Famous word. So the Torah, Moshe, the Torah that Hashem gave us, vis-a-vis Moshe being on Har Sinai for 40 days, right? 40 days and 40 nights and all that, is representative of God. So when we learn Torah, so when we give the donation, the, the truma, to the base of Middash, we're giving it through Torah. That's his message over here in the next part. How do you... We're talking about leaving Egypt, the Exodus. So the question is, how do you leave Egypt? What do we play cards? <laughs> what do we do? So we say, well, you get the key and get out of jail. Well, how do you get the key? So the answer is through Torah. And this is, of course, the uh, a foundation for, for us who believe that through Torah study, we actually help the Jews, the hostages. It doesn't mean to say we shouldn't give money to charity and we shouldn't put pressure. Everything's true. But the schus of a yid learning Torah is so powerful that it, it has the power to unlock the, the, the key, the hostage. That's what he says. Here. We are hostages. We're in bondage in Mitzrayim. We're hostages. And not just once a night, once a year, Pesach night. Every day we're a hostage. And we all know very well how we're caught. We like to sleep and like to eat and like to gossip and like blah, blah, blah. And all, all the timers that everyone has. So we're slaves to the Yetzir Hara in classical Musar terms. Says the Altareb, I understand. So just like you understand, Altareb says that the king comes down himself to the person who's in schmutz and is messed up and says, come with me, my friend, but I'm not dressed. You don't got to be dressed. I need you now. Put on a rag and come with me. And he takes him out, washes him up, cleans him up, puts on the nicest clothing, says, here, stand under the chuppah. Come to the, to the Rebbe. Come to the Shabbos meal. Wow. Mama took care of him. Alter Rebbe says the same thing happens to us when we unleash the power of Taira that Hashem has given us as a gift, Matana, and as a Yerusha. We say in our davening, God gave us, Hashem gave us with love, with Ava. You gave this to us with the illuminance of the face of the continents. You gave Hashem the Kainu, you gave us the title. There is nothing that can prevent a Jew from experiencing what we call Tveikus and Nefesh, attachment of the soul, Tveikus, except one thing stops us. What is that? Ella Harotzen, the will. Do you really want to be connected? Do you really want to be, have a dveikus? Sheim, sheim ain ha'adam writes a klal. Because if a person doesn't want at all to do this, chas v'sholem, ledovke boy, to cleave to Hashem, you ain't going to cleave to God. Harotzen, determination. And I believe this wholeheartedly this. I've seen it in my life, and I'm sure you've seen this. What we believe in and what we want, we get. Because Hashem is good. And Hashem wants to help us. So when Hashem sees that we want this, He helps us. And the more we want it, the more He helps us. So if a Jew says, I want to be davuk ba'kodesh baruch hu, be yechudah yinsav baruch in God's essence, and I really just want to be God, one with God, Hashem says, I will help you. But you have to want. And wanting doesn't mean that when something comes in the way, you give up. It's too hard. No, you're determined. Perseverance. Avo, miyad, shereitze. Look at the Altarebbe's word, miyad. 
As soon as you wake up from your not wanting and you say, I do want, I need help. It's as soon as he wants, and you accept. Umam shechi, you draw down all of his baruch, elokusi his baruch God upon yourself. Vaimir, and you say what? Hashem elokenu, Hashem echad. When we and say in Shema, Hashem elokenu, Hashem echad, we are saying ultimately what we're saying is, you're my God, not just elokenu, our God. You're my God, and therefore I can be in this relationship with you. Memele automatically. The person's soul is incorporated in God's unity. The Ruach Aisir Ruach, quoting the Zayar, the spirit brings along the spirit like the wind. One wind brings another wind, spiritually speaking. And it draws down another wind, another spirit. And this is, this is the exiting from Egypt that we talk about. Having been in a relationship with Hashem of Tveikus. You know, Yitzias Mitzrayim, the Pasha of Ayyem Hashem, Moshe Davim, the Yisrael, the Mark, Alem, the Otsil, the Hemtzitzis, that's the Pasha, the third Pasha of a portion of Shema, has nothing to do with, see me, has nothing to do with Shema Yisrael. Why did Chazal pin it together to Shema Vahoyim Shemaya? That's what he's saying over here. Says tiknu. Therefore, the sages, the Chachamim, established that the parsha of Yitzhak Mitzrayim should be said specifically during Krishna. Why? Afshehi mitzvah neyatzma. Even though it's a mitzvah by itself to 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 relate the story of the Exodus. The layman mitzvah Krishna, and it's not part of the mitzvah of Krishna, which is the unity of God. Shema Yisrael, Shem Elkeinu, Shem Echad. It's two separate mitzvahs. Kedisa the Gemara Poskim, as the Gemara and the authorities say. Ella, so the question is, why did the Chazal put them together? It's one thing. How is it one thing? Yitzias Mitzrayim is through Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echod. That's what Yitzias Mitzrayim, in other words, going out of bondage, going out of, of of slavery, get, becoming free is only through Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. If that doesn't resonate by you, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, ultimately you're stuck. And that's why in Chabad Hasidim, and I saw by Hasidim, and we saw by Hasidim, they spent a long time in meditation when they said Shema Yisrael in the morning Shachris prayer. It could be sometimes an hour meditating, reflecting, because the key is in Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. The key, the key is not Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Yoini, is the result. The, the, the issue is, how do I get to that result? And that's through, through, through it resonating by us that there's only one God, Hashem Elokeinu, and he's our God, he's my God, Hashem Echod. And when that resonates by a Jew, there's nothing that stops him. The Ratzit is there. And that's it, that's the key to Dveikus, that's the key to leaving Mitzrayim. And so too we find, al Rebbe says, at the end of the third parsha of Shema, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, we find that the, the, it, it, it ends with, I am God, your God. This also re- re- alludes to what we said earlier. What does it mean over here? Now, the question is, What's the purpose of repeating at the end of the parsha of um, of Yitzias Mitzrayim? Ani Hashem Elokechem. Ani Hashem Elokechem. We we said already, seemingly in Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael. Hashem Elokeinu. Hashem Echad. Right. So we know. You know. We we said that. We thought about it. Why, when we finish Shema, after we talk about Yitzias Mitzrayim? Vayomer, the parsha, the third parsha, we end, Ani Hashem Elokeichem, Emes, but it's Ani Hashem Elokeichem. That's his question, it says the al that the Chazal alluded to in the conclusion of the, of the third portion of Shema, Vayomer, A, the fact that they, they placed it together with Shema, as the third parsha, 
and B, that they concluded the third parsha itself, the Ni Hashem Elokeichem, which is a, which is a flashback to what we said in the beginning of Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echod. Ani Hashem Elokeichem. I am God, you're God. Because that's the ultimate of Yitzhiyah Mitzrayim. So the beginning is, 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 is giving you the derech to get out of Egypt. And at the end, we're saying as well, Ani Hashem Elokeichem. That will, will unlock the bondage. So this chapter in Tanya is a short one as we finished it in one day, Baruch Hashem. And the Nakuda is that, and, and this is a, it's a good chapter to kind of also memorize, you know, not verbatim, but at least orally the concept that, because we do say Shema every day, twice a day. It's a mitzvah, right? A deraisa. And it's worthwhile understanding why we, put, we, we add the parsha of Yetzirah Mitzrayim to Shema, because the Yetzirah Mitzrayim happens in its ultimate state if there is an Yashem Elokeichem, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echod. And if you're lacking in Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echod, there's a breakdown in, in the, in the Dveikos. So when people ask, why don't, why don't I have a dveikus to Hashem? Why don't I feel this deep attachment? Why? I would like to. I want to. But I, the answer is, you don't really want to yet. If you want to, you have to spend time in meditation and reflection on the Hashem Elekechem. And when that will resonate, you will have a Yetzirah Mitzrayim, and you'll have more dveikus. And there's no end to how much dveikus. And again, here we're talking about vacus doesn't mean necessarily dancing and clapping and screaming and crying and laughing. Everyone's vacus is a different vacus. One person can't tell, oh, if you clap for this, that's vacus. Maybe other systems of Chassidus believe that. But in Chabad, we don't believe that. We don't, we don't see the, the vacus coming through the Chitsonius. Yes, saying words uh, with out loud helps when you daven, and a little shuckle helps, and a little tear helps, and a little joy helps. No question about it. But at the end, the dveikus is individual. And we've seen, and we see people who, who the more that they're able to, to, to live with Ani Hashem Elokeichem, and Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echod, the more they live with that reality, the more they're not, they're not, they're not in slavery. They're not in slavery, even though maybe they have difficulties in in in, in serious issues. When when the Magid, when the Magid sent the person to the Bzusha, right? The person came and said, Rebbe, I, I, I have all these issues. And he complained and he cried and everything else. He says, Go see the Bzusha. And he comes in and he sees the Bzusha. With a little chair and the chavesi had no furniture and it was splintered and it was so po poverty and everything else and he was the happiest person. He understood why the maggid sent him there. <laughs> because the gashmias didn't determine his connection. The gashmias didn't con it turned the connection. Now it doesn't mean to say that you have to live that way. I know people who, you know, and I'm sure you do, are very wealthy and they live a simple lifestyle too. In other words, the gashmi as material doesn't absorb them. It doesn't become their lifestyle. And our Rebbe was very much into blessing people. They should have an abundance of gashmi. I mean, every, every Rebbe, every tzaddi, but, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, the Alter Rebbe's time and the Mittler Rebbe's time 200 years ago. There, there was more really, uh, you could say, a... An emphasis is, you know, uh, Ruchnius versus Gashmius. So comes along the Hayyoyim and says, Make of your Gashmius Ruchnius. That means I should have Gashmius. Lots of Gashmius. Lots of Gashmius. And take that Gashmius and make of it Ruchnius. Hevra will continue tomorrow with a new chapter. Zai Gazunt, Rafush Lema. Rafush Lema. One second, one second, Rafush Lema for. My shviger, um, Esther Bas Basia for Shlema. Say amen. Amen. Okay. What did you say? What did you now say? I, now I understand. Now I understand uh, why in the oil they have a vending machine with all different kinds of pastrami sandwiches and sushi. <laughs> and never a it. Now they chop it. Thank you, Rabbi. And that's a good Chaim Berliner talking. L'chaim. <laughs> 
Take care, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.